Awesome. So we talked a little bit about trail elbow angle. Let's go back into settings and let's take a look at, so we've got the lead, lead elbow angle as well. Let's go into the knees. I think this could be, could be kind of, yeah. could be a game changer really. Let's look at both. As, especially at the setup. Okay. So let's do that. So let's go set up and let's take it from a down the line angle. So here we've got, so this is my swing, my personal, personal golf swing. So I've got a little less bend in the left leg than I do the right leg. So I'm, I'm favoring my right side yeah. a little bit. Again, just something it points yeah. out. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe not something you, we, you know, we really change. I mean, I mean, you know, it's really funny. This is where, again, it becomes difficult to understand. You know, in some facets of the golf swing, three degrees is everything. In knee bend, you know, three degrees isn't isn't going to make or break you. Well, this is kind of interesting because I've I've had left knee issues and left hip issues. So maybe that's just showing that I'm favoring my right side just a little bit. There you go. So if it gets, you know, past five or six degrees, it then, might be something I need to take a look at. And, and you know what? That's what we're going to find out. Yeah. You know, for, see, for you, you're six, seven, you've got short arms. You're probably going to have to have more knee bend than the average person to get right. down to the ball. My arms aren't the longest either. I tend to need more, you know, and so that, that's what this data is going to be all about. It's not like what's right. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it's not even, you know, what's the range. It's for someone who's, you know, when we start collecting all of this data from all of the instructors that have this system and we have a whole giant, you know, volume of data and we'll be able to say, okay, guy who's six, seven, who has a 6'4 wingspan, we've got 33 of these guys in the 20,000 person database, and we see that the guys that shoot par or better have X amount of knee bended address and get in the good impact position, and the guys that shoot you know, in the hundreds have that plus minus four, 10 degrees. Say no knee bend, bending over to the much, waist. They're not athletic in a, in a dynamic state. Wh whatever. Sure. And, th and that's what's gonna happen is, you know, it's not just gonna be about you know, too much, too much now is about, okay, the average tour player does X. Right. Well, the average person is not the average tour player. Sure. And the average tour player might be five foot 10 with a six foot wingspan and can do, move his body in this range of motion. Sure. Whereas someone like you, you put your body into the tour averages, you won't be able to get the club on the ball. That's exactly right. Well, and let's, let's face it, look at some of, some of these guys are world-class athletes. And how many golfers do we have that are, you know, how many amateurs out there are world-class athletes that are trying to play golf? You know, less than, you know, a third of 1%. Right? right. So comparing any amateur player to what Dustin Johnson does or what <laughs> Bubba Watson does. I saw, you know, to use, the, I saw Dustin Johnson barefoot stand underneath a basket and jump and dunk the ball. Mm. So I'm, I can't do that. I'm 6'7", and I can't do that either. So, so you know. Awesome. So let's take a look a little bit more at, at these angles. So we, got, we have me at setup. Let's just go to the top of the backswing. All right, so rotate it just a little bit and we'll see. So I've got 141 degrees of bend in my right leg and 121 degrees of bend in Which my would make leg. sense, cool. you know, you're gonna be a little more bent with the left than, okay. you, know, than you, know, you are with, because you know, Th those numbers, you, to know how much knee bend, you know, so 141, you've got 39 degrees of bend in your right knee. Sure. Okay. And you've got uh, 59 degrees of bend in your left knee. I, I would, my instinct is to say that's probably about right. So, so let's go back to address real quick. Let's take a look at address again. Just remember, so 131, so I straightened my trail knee eight degrees. So yeah. with an eight, I was hitting an eight iron, I believe. I don't need a ton of hip rotation, I don't no. need a, a ton of, I'm not trying to hit that, that eight iron as far as I can, no. so, but so, I'm still straightening enough to see, see, as, the knee bend. I mean, it makes perfect sense. As you rotate your hips, you're gonna lose some flex here and you're gonna gain some flex there. Sure. Awesome, let's take it to, to impact now. And you know, to, 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 go, to go back to that original point, there's a real big, people say, maintain the flex in your right knee in the backswing huge misconception. That just means don't lock it. Sure, so but lock means don't hyperextend. Don't hyperextend it. It doesn't mean maintain the flex, because right. that'll shut off, you know, maintain the original 
sure. you know, address flex. And let's, well, you know, let's be honest, that's almost impossible to do, really. If, if I've seen want. people do it. Right. I've seen people add flex to their right knee, trying to maintain it, and guess what happens to their hip turn? Zero. None. And they have back issues. And they have back issues, and they hit the ball all over the place. So we're looking at, at impact here. So as you can see, I've got a little bit, of, little bit more trail knee bend than I do then I do lead knee bend, which that would make sense because I'm starting to post up on this leg and this leg is starting to get out of the way. And this is something we've talked about before. I personally would like to see more right knee bend in your swing. Okay, so you're saying, you, you and so would you wanna see my left leg be a little bit, little bit straighter there, a little mm -hmm. bit more open? Maybe, Okay. maybe. Okay. Interesting. Any, anything else to add as no, far as, I mean, as, far I mean, as the legs go? It, it, to, to me, this is just, again, I don't know what these numbers are. This is my instinct from watching well, first, thousands and thousands of golf swings. And first time seeing them. Right? right. I would think a six degree separation between knee flex and impact is not near enough. Interesting. The, the, I don't, and again, I don't know exactly what the number is, sure. but my, my instinct is that six is not near enough. Well, and you'll have this software, you know, in the next couple of days, you'll get to play around with it and figure it out. So, you know, when, when I have, you know, 20 good players hit on it and they're around 20 degrees of separation and I'm seeing all the 30 handicappers are about the same. Sure. I'll know that 20 is a pretty good number and zero is not. Sure. You know. And, and that's something that I recommend to a lot of, a lot of instructors that, you know, just get the MySwing system for the first time. Get your players on there that you, you know, you've, you've worked with the most and really understand their golf swings. So that way when you suit them up, when you capture their swings and you're looking at all these curves and you're looking at all this stuff, you know how they move. You've worked with them for all these years. You can then start to kind of pinpoint and pick out the, you know, looking at the avatar, looking at the graph and seeing what some of these curves mean. You know, going to the Dr. Phil Cheatham classes and going to these seminars around the country, that's great. But in my opinion, it's a lot better to, or, or it's easier to learn this by, by going this route. Seeing, you yeah. know my golf swing really well. Seeing my golf swing and then applying it to some of these new graphs, would you agree that's the quickest way to learn this? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you sit in driver's ed class and learn all the rules of the road and what starts the car, but until you get behind the wheel and drive it, you, don't, you, you have no practical experience. Sure. Exactly. So... Again, to, to recap, we took a look at some of the new settings with the new software. Again, the software is going to be released very soon. We're really excited about it. Thanks again for helping us out, stopping by. It was a pleasure. Thank you.